Hi, I'm Stuart Lefevre. I'm the park interpreter here at Copper Break State Park. Copper Break State Park is known for quite a few things, most notably our dark night skies. We're an international dark sky park with a Bortle II rating. Our Texas Longhorn Herd, we have eight members of the official state Longhorn Herd. But a little less well-known fact is that we actually have a lot of great hiking trails here, like the Juniper Ridge Trail behind me. The Juniper Ridge Trail is a really good example of the geology of the landscape of the Rolling Plains and provides some of the most stunning views at our park in our 11-mile trail system, as well as having interpretive signage to help you learn and understand about the processes that made the landscape the way it is today. Behind me, you can see that the red rock here is falling off the hillside in big chunks due to the powers of erosion, weathering, and deposition. And in a moment, we're gonna get on the trail and check out some of those processes and more examples a little bit down the line. So the main driving factor for erosion and weathering here at Copper Breaks is water. And the water around here comes in two places, namely Devil's Creek, which is what our lake is formed from, and the Pease River, which is farther to the south. That broad, flat plain is the Pease River Valley. These are both very seasonal and require large amounts of rainfall over short periods of time to actually get water into the landscape since this is a semi-arid part of the state. But when they fill, they fill quickly and they carve the very soft porous sandstone fast and carve the canyons, badlands, and breaks that you see all around us right now. So the Devil's River forms the backbone of our park and most of the rugged landscape that you will see as you drive through the park. So during the Permian period, about 250 million years ago, Copper Bricks was on the shoreline of an ancient sea. And so before me, you can see beachfront property that used to be here. At that time, Texas was roughly on the equator. So the climate was even hotter than it is now, if you can believe that. And the inland sea cut into the continent of Pangaea. All of the continents at that time, Europe, Africa, Asia, North America, South America, were smushed into one. And that inland sea cut into the interior to our beachfront property. You've probably heard of the Permian Basin out in West Texas where a lot of the oil and gas is extracted in the state. This is the shoreline of that basin. These waves formed about 255 million years ago and the sand hardened to what we call sandstone, a type of sedimentary rock, rock that is made from small little particles. So as we saw when we were talking about erosion, that breaks apart very, very easily because it was once sand, became rock, and very quickly becomes sand again when exposed to the elements of wind and water in the weathering process. So all of the rocks here at Copper Breaks are part of the Permian period. So a period about 280 to 230 million years ago or so. And we have ranges of rocks of those ages here at the park. The oldest rock in the park is called the Clear Fork Group. That's about 280 million years old, and that's down by the river, and you can't really see it from where we're standing right now. The bulk of the rock in the park is part of what's called the San Angelo Formation. The San Angelo Formation is pretty much all this red rock that you see in front of us. And the last layer of rock that we have in the park is the newest rock, which is under 250 million years old. It's called the Blaine Formation. If you look in the distance, there's that tan color hill. That is the very high point of the park. That's about 200 feet higher than the riverbed. That is the only example of the Blaine Formation that we have in our park, although you can see more of it on the horizon heading north towards the town of Kwana. So different layers, the older stuff is at the bottom, the newer stuff is at the top, and the forces of water and wind have cut off a lot of the top layers and exposed really old rock. People ask if we have dinosaur fossils out here at the state park. There might have been dinosaur fossils at one time in this area, but millions of years ago, or at least tens of thousands of years ago, those were wiped out by rivers that flowed from the Rocky Mountains during the Ice Age and washed all of those away to the Gulf of Mexico leaving the old Permian red beds behind. As erosion takes place and water and wind take pieces of the sandstone rock off with them, they deposit that sand in other places. We call this deposition. As you can see, there was a significant rain event here. Could have been recently, could have been a while ago. We've had periods of powerful rain with long periods of drought that flowed and dragged that sand with it as it flowed down the trail. This covers plants, this covers rocks, and creates new layers of soil that might later be populated by plants, but for right now, create what we call scalds and create these weird red landscapes that are kind of resemblance of, uh, 
of Mars where the red dirt has no vegetation on top and creates a blank slate of sorts for new plants to take hold. So as you can see behind me, large pieces of rock, harder layers on top, are undercut by softer layers on the bottom, making the Juniper Ridge one of the more interesting geological trails we have here at Copper Breaks. As you're exploring Texas State Parks, make sure you admire the fossil trackways that are at Dinosaur Valley State Park, the hoodoos that are at Big Bend Ranch State Park, and the canyon, of course, at Palo Duro Canyon State Park. And if you stop by Quanah, Texas, come check out Copper Break State Park, where we have some smaller but very interesting red rock geology of our own.